In Adobe Photoshop, you can have like, oh, like 8,000 layers, which would be ridiculous, but you could. But you know what? You can only have one background. So let's talk about the difference between a background. It's not the background layer, it's the background and layers. And there is a fundamental difference between them. Open up in your exercise files, backgrounds and layers. In this particular document, I have three things. I have two layers and one background. The layers are doggy and light bulb. The background is called number one background. That's the only thing it can be called. And you'll notice that it's italicized. That's a giveaway. It's letting you know it is what is called the background. You will notice when I select it, everything grays out up here. I can't change the blending mode, the opacity, the locking mechanisms. I can't put an effect on it down here. That's grayed out too. Why? Well, number one, because it's not a layer. Now, if I go to light bulb or doggy, everything lights up. I mean, I can come over here and I can move the dog around. I can, well, here's another thing. I can pick up my eraser tool and erase on the doggy. Give him some stripes, I guess. That is transparent. I'm erasing to transparency when I do that. I go to light bulb, I suppose, do the same thing. Maybe something like that. Whatever. I can change it. I can change its opacity. I can do anything I want to that layer. But if I come to the background, and I've got the eraser tool. Notice, doesn't seem like anything's happening. Backgrounds don't support transparency. That's why you have over here a background color. Now let me reverse these. So black is now my background color. Let me go back to Doggy with the eraser tool and begin erasing and nothing's changed. But if I go into background and do the same thing, I am in a sense painting, or I guess you could say erasing with the background color. Now, why is that? Why do we have something that has no control? You can only have one of them. It doesn't move. It doesn't support transparency or anything else. Because there are some formats that we save things in that require a flattened image without transparency, and we need that type of element in the layers palette to make it work. You say, well, can you make a background into a layer? And the answer to that is, of course, the most common way to do that is you just simply come to the background and double click on it and it will ask you if you want to convert it into a layer. You could give it a name if you wanted to and click OK. And boom, it's a layer with all the features of a layer. Now let me undo that. Here's another way you can do it now. This is new. In previous versions of Photoshop, if you wanted to apply a layer mask, say to these layers, all you had to do is click the button. But if you went to a background and tried to do that, it would give you a grayed out icon here. But watch what happens when I click it now. Well, it assumes that you want to create a layer mask. You've got to have a layer, not a background. Now, if layers and layer masks aren't too comfortable for you yet, they will be. We're going to talk about those a lot. But backgrounds are there for a reason. And one of the main reasons is flattening images out, putting everything all together for formats that don't support some of the features of Photoshop. I suppose in the future, way in the future, when all formats, TIFFs and JPEGs and GIFs and everything, are so much like the PSD format that it's possible we wouldn't need a background in the layers palette anymore. But that's what a background is and that's what a layer is. Big difference. On to the next.